So this is this is the byproduct of being an asshole. Look at that. Ten, st see it, ten stitches. Damn. Yeah. I um yeah, I was off the hook yesterday when I made that video. My only regret is that was my only regret is that that was my first video of the day because I was about to crank out five hysterical videos. I felt it in me. I felt the muse. After I made that one, I was like, yeah, I'm on a roll. I'm gonna bang out like five awesome videos. And then I cut my shit open. So that's really my biggest regret. I mean, so I didn't I wasn't able to capture the awesomeness. But so what we're gonna do today, obviously I'm not doing snatches. Chris is uh, fighting something off. Right, Barnard? Because we don't get sick around here. We don't get sick, we fight shit off. So Chris is fighting something off. Danny's got the swine flu. <laughs> <laughs> He's got H1N1, bird and swine. Uh, so we're just, we're gonna, we'll probably go through, I'm gonna go through a light kettlebell workout with one arm. You motherfuckers who complain about injuries and you can't train. Look, my hand is damn near sliced off. And I'm, st I'm still gonna train, I still gotta train. So I'm gonna hit some kettlebell swings and shit with one hand. A um, Couple of things. Chris and I are gonna have a dick measuring contest with a 60 pound set of balls, with 60 pound big black balls. So basically, uh, we got these 60 pound medicine balls in for the strength camp challenge. More details to come, probably this weekend, right? Um, but of course, you know, anything heavy that shows up at strength camp we gotta like all test it out ourselves so we'll do a little quick little wager on that i don't want any bullshit because chris is fighting something off but also i got one hand so we're both handicapped damn right i use the force i use my mental power mm, i use my focus man and i move the ball so we'll do a backward ball, ball toss the reason why i'm holding this it's cause, also, I'm gonna pick, this is how I usually answer, do my um, Yo Elliot videos, but since I didn't do any yesterday, I'm gonna go into my inbox, let me find it, and we're gonna just, maybe between sets, we'll randomly answer some questions that you guys have here. So, uh, I'll look for questions, I'll answer, I'll give my answer, and Chris will give his answer, so you get some kind of, uh, get some kind of perspective because you know we, we probably probably have different answers for different things so that's it we're gonna get started in a minute so in before all the kettlebell nazis critique my form because you know that's exactly what kettlebell nazis do you do like one exercise with a kettlebell and they all hop on you like they fucking pavel they really think they're pavel each one of them the best is when you like the best the best is when somebody comments yeah. and they're like critiquing your form and then you're like, all right, let me just see, you know, maybe I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe <laughs> you're better than me. That's fine. And then you click on their thing and it's like video game videos posted and they, <laughs> they like, oh, like montages. Yeah. Honestly, though, the shit that pisses me off, I made a video about this like two years ago. The shit pisses me off about the kettlebell Nazis is because it's a fucking 54 pound ball. I do some wild shit with like 300 pound balls. So, are you concerned about my health and, and me injuring myself with a 55 pound piece of shit? Looks like a lump of cat shit. Oh, watch out. Oh, <laughs> oh I might get sued, right? The Russians might come. They might come sue me. The fuck? I, I lift 300, 400 pound stones. Logs that are 300, 400 pounds over my head. Stones and tires. The fuck? You really think I'm gonna hurt myself with a kettlebell? And even if I do, I'm sure by twisting my arm a little bit, or, or I don't know, all, all the weird, weird little things that they have you do, it's gonna make a big fucking difference. If, you, if you're a skinny little weak pussy, maybe it makes a difference. You're gonna do it because you're a phallic narcissist, no, and you gotta no. prove yourself, just like I do. Here's exactly why I don't wanna do it. Oh, you don't wanna do it? I don't wanna do it, here's exactly why. Because, because, if I win, if I lose, it's a lose-lose for me. Because if I lose, I look like a dumbass because I lost somebody with a hand cut. If I win, you have your hand cut and it doesn't matter. <laughs> so either way, it's a lose-lose for me. So I'll wait till that hands heal and we'll get on. Maybe we just do it just for a warm-up. Yeah, 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 it's just a warm-up, bro. It's just warm-up for our workout. 
It's not a challenge. It's just warm up for our workout. Yeah, that's how it starts. That's you could always it. just say it was just I was just warming up. Yeah. It's all just a that's gonna be my excuse. It's all just you throw it up before me. It's just yeah, I was just warming up. Hold my beer. Look, so far Rogue hasn't oh, disappointed me. Yeah. If 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 I break their fucking equipment, then I'll make a bad review video. But so far, I'm sure I'm bringing them business because all the shit that I buy is from their website. I'll put my affiliate link down below. I'm starting here, heels here. You go first. And I'll mark it. You mark me? Okay. So like I said, this we're just testing this out because it's gonna be one of your one of the events for uh Shrimp Camp Challenge. More information coming soon. You want that prize money? Better start practicing. How much is it? It's gonna be. It's gonna be a couple G's, right? Yeah, we're giving away thousands. Yeah. How much? A briefcase. A briefcase of hundreds. I don't, I don't know. know. Like, if you win this <laughs> shit, you're 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 pretty much a boss. So you earn a lot of money. We're not we'll fucking. Feature around. you in GQ magazine. Ah, okay, here you go. Look. I mean, really, that's that's like less than. Are you holding or are you, are you curdling? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. ten feet. You gotta be a boss. That shit are is you, heavy. Are you, uh. I held it like with my wrist because. can't do it like the other minute, but you gotta switch up form. Chris, how you feeling? Oh, man. You got it? Nope. He's fighting on that right? swine. Oh! Yeah, but hold on. You're all over that line. I passed you by like four yards. Give it back to me. That was a warm up. I was, yeah. We just warming up. What you mad for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's just warm up. He's mad. <laughs> He's mad. That was a, that was a fault. That was a line <laughs> fault. Hold on now. Yeah, see, because you know what? No matter what, his hands cut. Bitch, you Billy's here wasn't cut. What? Hi. Hi. <laughs> you should be honest with me. Come you. true, come true. Them big boy draws on. Get them big boy draws on. Uh, get on me, <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> that was impressive. That's gonna be tough for people to do. That's why. That listen, none of the events are gonna be easy. It's gotta be tough to do. 60 pounds over your head like that, you gotta be a boss. I don't see anybody getting it that much further than you, Chris, than that right there. Besides myself, perhaps. When my hand is fixed. Ah! <laughs> 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 We should measure that. That's pretty far. Let me get the tape measure. This shit is heavy. Good job, bro. Oh, thank you, Daniel. Hundred and ninety three inches. One hundred and ninety-three inches. That's not gonna be easy to beat. That's gonna be a good one though. That's gonna be cool. Yeah. Because you're good. gonna get some big motherfucker that's gonna launch it. But if you're in Hamlet Field, you whoop me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Not bad, not bad. Just cut them open. Let's do a question real quick and then I'm just gonna grab the kettlebell. Are you gonna train with me or are you just uh, fighting shit off. Because otherwise it's going to be a short video. Okay, this is purely spontaneous. So I'm not like pre-selecting these. 
Energy of the body. Of course, that's a question that comes to Elliot Hulse. Yeah, that's all you do. <clears throat> Doesn't matter, because it's, it's interesting. Oh, this is a long one. Guys, don't send me long ass questions. Look at that, blocks of text, but now I have to read it. Okay, listen closely. You answer, answer this one, you answer it first. I recently watched one of your videos about deep breathing, tension in the body, stress, muscular discomfort, etc. And I recognize that it is necessary to release somehow the energy of my body. Hey Chris, we talked enough about this for you to answer this question. The problem is that I've got this huge nervous tick. Since I'm young, or I, since I've been young, I will kind of put each hand on the opposite shoulder and contract my face, arms, neck, and shoulder as hard as I can and close as hard as I can and close as I can to my chest. Okay. Sometimes even making high pitched sounds while I'm doing so. When I'm in public, I can control myself and do not do it. But when I'm at home, it's gotta be a troll question. But when I'm at home, I do it unintentionally. Every time I do it, my parents and my brothers talk and look at me with contempt. I only do it when I'm stressed in a good way. When I'm stressed in a bad way, I get panic attacks. But they seem to be quite less frequent now. Or when I'm overly happy. Often it's when I think about stories in my head or play video games. I also have a huge concentration problem at school, but I can still get 100% just by learning the things we do in class at home by myself. I was only wondering if you could help me in any possible way. Nobody seems to understand me. I don't understand the fucking question. What's the question, bro? Help you how? So basically, he's got a nervous tick that looks like this. Well, what he, is it from? he goes like this. That's a troll yeah, that's a troll question. But you know, this is the type of question I would answer. So, what do you, look at, well, Chris, what do you think? Uh, yeah. So neck, face, arm, he tenses all of his muscles. When I'm in public, I can control myself. I don't do it. When I'm at home, I do it unintentionally. Ah! Every time I do it. <laughs> Every time I do it, my parents and my brother talk and look at me with contempt. I only do it when I'm stressed in a good way. Ah, shit is good! When, it, when it's a bad situation, I get panic attacks. Can you help me in some way? So it's like Tourette's syndrome. You know what I say? I can help. Uh, I would help him earn some money. Get somebody to carry a camera around. I just watch you do that shit all day long. No, that will be entertaining. No. One time, I watched. On MTV True Life, I have Tourette Syndrome, and that's what a guy was doing. Seriously, and he was like embarrassed to go on a date with a girl because every time he would do like a little, I swear, and he would do it and he would like smile and he would look all weird, but he, he couldn't control it. But they diagnosed that at a young age. Yeah, I don't know, that must be a troll question. But, I tell you what, regardless of what type of condition you have or something that seems as if it, it would cause pain or hurt in your life, if you own this shit, people will respect you. Like, there was this one, there was this one dude when I, I was in high school, I played basketball. We just, you know, pick up basketball. His name was Cornell, and he had, a, he had an arm like this. He had a cerebral palsy, I know what you're talking about. right? So I mean like, and he, he kind of walked like this, but he owned the shit. Like, I mean, he, he just like kind of pointed out the, the elephant in the room, the 600 pound gorilla. He points it out like, yeah, I got a fucked up arm, but he had so much skill in his one hand that like you wanted him on your basketball team. I mean, he was wrapped back and shit like this. He would come up and post up on you like this with one hand and, and, and hobbling. And because I think his attitude, basically because his attitude was one of ownership of, yeah, I'm taking responsibility for this. You guys ain't fucking with me, even though this, I got this going on made him such a badass. I mean, he had respect, women, all the dudes respected him. Now, he could have had a different type of attitude, like, you know, poor me. Ah! I'm such a loser, look at me ah! twitching and shit. But if you put your foot in it, you put your stamp on it, you own up to it, that type of conviction will, 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 will garner respect from people in your environment. You can't fix it? Feature it.
How long did they say that's gonna take? Cool, I'll watch you next time. Um, stitches come out Saturday. This Saturday? That's what she told me. I heal fast. Oh, she knew that too, huh? Yep. <laughs> so by looking at me. I'll tell you what, I could probably do something with these three fingers. Hey, Dan, go check this shit out. This is worthy of being on the video. Yeah. I could draw, but this shit is crazy. Play one of this. It's fucking some dude drew Elliot. Twice. Damn, this bitch drew your cavities and everything. Look at that shit. That motherfucker put his cavities on there. Hell no. Nah. Yeah. Alexander. Is that bubblegum? Yeah, this, this is from the same guy. guy. Yeah. Yeah, the funny thing is, let me tell you a funny story. Today I was uh you no know, we're camping this weekend. So I was clearing out my uh, my trailer. I put it there, I'm walking back to the gym. And most deliveries go in the front or in the mailbox. Imagine, this shit is sitting there, right like this, like next to the door. First thing I think is pipe bomb. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> I walk over and I'm like, I swear to God, the funniest shit would have been if there was a camera to see me. I'm like, Because look too, it's from, it's from Europe, it's like, don't give his address on there, but I mean, everything on it is weird. So I start peeling it back, little by little, and I'm like this. Then I look in, I see the paper rolled up, I pulled it out, and that's what it was. You might think, I'm, I guess I'm paranoid. Am I paranoid? <laughs> this shit looks like a fucking pipe bomb. People, somebody might want to be famous. But this is beautiful, thank you. Got all my ugliness in there too. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's the strongest version of doing some draw. Artist. <laughs> Artist. Hey, you a good ass drawer, boy. <laughs> hey, that boy there, good. A good drawer. That boy right there. <laughs> Yo, I thought about you all weekend. Because <laughs> you're in the woods? I was in the woods. <laughs> Every time I see a boat go by, I'll, I think, John Boat, <laughs> Skiff. Yeah, I do some fishing. Wait, you gonna see me on the back of one of them with some damn overalls? John Boat. <laughs> Chewing one, on. One overall on. Like some Huckleberry Finn shit. Okay. I bet I could. You know what, um. Hey, you can sprint. You can do some sprints after. <laughs> All right, I'll just sprint. It's good. I, I needed this kind of workout anyway. It's getting a little stale. Just in time for Halloween. Give me some candy. <laughs> Put it right in my hand, huh? <laughs> Elliot Holtz. <laughs> you should. You should know y'all should dress up like each other. <laughs> hey, that'd be good, right? What up? What up? Dress up like that guy? You guys should lighten your skin up a little bit. Shorts and shirts, you have a t shirt. No, you guys could do it. I would dress yeah, up. I would dress up as Chris dressing up, which is polo shirt and baggy jeans. <laughs> you go get like a heavy spray tan, bro, and then just fucking cut your beard just like this. I go to my girlfriend's store and buy some shorts. Yep. <laughs> I 
I'd have to spray tan my legs, my yeah, thighs. Yeah, the whole thing. You just get in the mystic and it just shoots you and you turn around. Wow, with those shoes on. Yeah. Now we can used to walk the good neighborhoods because that's where they gave out the big Good candy. candy. They give you like a whole fucking Snickers bar. Yeah. Like <laughs> Not candy corn. Fucking candy corn. That's the nastiest and, shit. That's and, like sweet and, wax. Yeah, and the worst the fuck eats that. Even, no, the worst is when they don't even wrap. It's not even a wrapper. It's just a whole bowl of that shit. Yeah. All the nasty kids. And you know, this is the time of the year when snots start crushing up on their face and lips. It's wine flu. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's nasty. Halloween. So here's a tip. For you parents out there wondering how to deal with your children eating all that shit on Halloween, because we, well, I mean, we, we were kind of Nazis for a while. I eased up a little bit. So here, here's how we handle it. Here's how I handle it with my kids so they don't turn into fucking maniacs, crack addicts on Halloween. From the time we leave the house until when we come back, you can eat whatever the fuck you want. Eat it all. Make yourself sick. Like, I, I'm telling them. Keep eating, make yourself sick. Cause after a certain point, they just, it disgusts them. They look in the bag and they're like, no daddy, no more. I'm like, look, enjoy your candy now. Cause when we go home, trash. So that's it. When you get home, cause otherwise what happens is this. Cause you remember this when you were a kid. Thanks Christmas, I mean, um, Halloween candy will last through New Year's. Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember having a pie like this and every day I go on a little binge. That's disgusting. So I tell my, I tell my kids, eat it all. Oh, next day, because some of them must still wipe their butts. Next day, is the toilet bowl looks like blue and purple and red. It's just, the toilet bowl is nasty. Because there's all that sugar coming out, all that fucking dye and all those chemicals. So, and then that's it, they're done. So it's basically a span of three hours, binge, and then you're fucking done. That's it, throw it away. We, we throw it away. Go give it to the bums at Ten City. Or we can give it to the supplement companies, because that's what they're giving people for supplements. Right? What's that shit that I said yesterday? One of them was like rock strawberry rock candy or some shit. That, that really tells you a lot about how tough bodybuilders are. The marketers realize, hey, they buy more if we call it rock candy. Strawberry liquid jelly cream candy. And strawberry lemonade. Because they, they do their research, they know what's going to sell more. If you call the supplement candy, you put candy in the title, grown fucking men who are supposed to be getting jacked, get all, they start giggling and chewing on it like it's candy. So we'll give you guys a fucking candy so you can get jacked. I just pretended like I didn't even dress up. That's great. This is a good party too. Ah! Let me pull up another question. Sorry, I got, we got thrown off because that dumbass question. I get it though, because you ask dumbass questions because I answer dumbass questions. Disgusted with myself at the gym. That sounds like a good question. Disgusted with myself, in, in capital, in caps. Disgusted with myself in the gym. Now that's a good fucking question. See, now you guys can start calculating what I might answer. Or what I'll even look at. Disgusted with myself. I want to see what you're disgusted about. Um, got home from the gym. I feel like I'm wasting my time. I'm 32. I've been consistently training for four days a week for the past two years. At first, I was having a nice body, but now I just want to move to heavy ass weights. Okay? Do you, do you notice? Right away, there's a dichotomy in that single question. At first, I was about moving, having a nice body, but now I want to move heavy ass weights. He went from narcissism to pleasure. I played baseball and love and miss the competition. So I was wanting to maybe start powerlifting. OK, 
okay? I'm 5'11", 170, with long limbs. Past four months, I've been running Welder, uh, Wendler's 531, exactly as it's laid out in the book. I eat plenty, eight hours of sleep, been on creatine for three months. My bench press has gone down. My squat is shitty, my deadlift seems to be making good progress. I went from bench pressing 235 for a single rep. Today I couldn't even push 225. I feel weak, period. I don't even want to admit my, my weakness, whatever. Should I back off the heavy days and focus more on reps for a while? Perhaps I need to stop crying and keep grinding on Wendler. I train hard, I don't dick around and talk to people at the gym like we do, right? I'm here to work. Okay, I have an idea how I would approach it, and then it's not a question, not an answer I didn't give before. What do you think, Chris? Well, I, I approach it a little bit differently. Like, I, try, I would try to ask him more. But if you, you know, like, people who ask me, no, but you know people who ask me, I usually, if it's something that I feel like there's more to it, I'll shoot him a reply back, and I'll be like, what's the ask him, what else? Ask him your question. I'll give you his name right now, so you can refer to him respectfully. His name is, fuck, hold on, Curtis Narrowmore. See, I try to answer where they're at. That's You're right. going to ask something like, what's your, what's your, what's, where is it perceived, what, like, what's your motive? Like, what's, what's really pushing you because, you know what I'm saying? To me, I, I would be like, if this was a kid asking me, obviously I'll go to him where he's at, but it's like, if he's been working out for two and a half years and he just all of a sudden started Wendler, he says everything else is on point, but it's like, When's the last time you actually rested? When's the last time you actually just stopped the weights? When's the last time you balanced out your nervous system? When's the last time, you know what I'm saying? If he's in the same rut and nothing's coming, how, I mean, what's the def definition of insanity? You keep doing the same thing, expecting different results. So I would, to me, I would be like, on the surface, asking that. That's a good place to start. But if, I mean, and that's how, that's how I kind of approach my videos is, Simplest, easiest thing that can help them better right now. Overtime athletes. <laughs> YouTube slash overtime athletes. Go subscribe. But like you said, I mean, he's, he's 32. He's wanting to do this. You might want to look at what. I mean, where is he coming you, from? You know what? A lot of what you were talking about before it makes a lot of sense. Like. Well, if, if achievement is so important to you in this regard at 32 years old, meanwhile, this is a sport that if it began, it's usually in high school or early college. I mean, you're, you're, you're probably about five, seven years, not too late, but past the time when most people start. Where are you lacking fulfillment? Right, because he's 32. Right, because that same lack of fulfillment that you're having in other more mature areas of your life. Now, this is all, of course, you could argue with me, is a byproduct of something that's missing, and that same thing that's missing is showing up here. I would say intensity of commitment might be one of the things that you're lacking. You know, if you're still searching for some sort of attainment, you must have, fa and you're 32 years old, you probably failed several times up until this point, or failed to exert yourself in a worthwhile way that would, that would achieve, you know, be worth any type of achievement. And now you're trying to do it again, but that same missing puzzle piece is what's, le what's leading to your failure here. Well, and if I had to guess, I would say it's lack of intense commitment. Basically, like, are you really giving everything you have? Just going to the gym four days a week doesn't equal success. Putting in 100% of your effort, focus, concentration, and attention on that particular thing, be it a be it a, a competition or a trophy of some sort, leaves no room for error. I and I don't care if you follow five three one or you follow some other program, you're going to attain it. It's an attitude, and you might be missing a particular attitude trait. Very true. I think that Wendler's, and I think Wendler's is awesome. I got I got the utmost respect for it. But from my experience, like Wendler's not for me. That 531 is not for me. And let me tell you why. It's because from experience of seeing people do it, <laughs> the, from experience of seeing people do it, you get in a mindset when you follow a program like that. It's all a numbers game. So you go in, you hit this X, Y, and Z, and that's it. You think everything else is going to take care of itself and magic is going to happen. 
because you have this set forward. As long as I'm hitting that, and you usually they usually encourage you to start a little a lot lower, so you're you're undershooting what your true maxes are. So you know you feel good in the beginning. He's been doing it four months. He feels good first two months. He's hitting numbers. He might feel good. And don't get me wrong, this might be for some people like you said that are are completely intense and 100% committed to each and everything, and they're trying to go harder. I, for one, am, am not a percentage guy. I go in and every single time that I touch those weights, I'm going for something that's a little bit more, a little bit harder. Right. If my body feels like it can't handle that, then I back away for that day. I don't try to push for that number if I'm not there. And if I feel stronger than that number, I'm gonna go past it. Yeah. So he might just be in the rut of like, oh, if I put these numbers up, that's the thing is like guys without, you know, who, who don't have a lot of, he's had a lot of years, but he, he's been doing bodybuilding. As far as increasing your numbers on the weights, intensity, your load, that might not be the situation where, you know, he's going and he's saying, I have to do 225, 235 for my last set of one. And he's just thinking by the next week or by the next month, he's gonna get to 245, stuff like that. So he's not gonna be, you know, like you said, he's not fully committed to actually increasing his numbers. He's committed to actually hitting the numbers that are there in front of him. That's such a beautiful point. Beautiful point, Christopher. Yeah. That's a beautiful point, right? Because you could you could lay out the most beautiful plan, perfect plan, but it never goes according to the plan. So what do you do? You give 100% every time you have an opportunity to give 100%, and you back off when you don't have it, right? That's why we don't design plans with, with percentages. Right. You don't design, like, you don't have percentages in total Nah, I, I like to go by rep maxes. So right. you, it takes care of itself in the percentage realm. Right. Because it is a percentage of your one rep max. You give somebody a three rep max, that's a percentage of your one rep max. Mm -hmm. But we're just wording it differently. Mm -hmm. And, and I, then we say half of your one rep max. Right. Because it's like, you go in and I want you to give, at that, that, that's what it is. Right. There is no future, there is no past. Today is your training day, right. it's your numbers. Yeah. So. Yeah. We're not concerned with any type of number except right. get this. Right. Get stuff. <laughs> just get this. He I mean, did it. That's why I'm saying it, because he did it, and he, he got, he, he went lower, he did the same exact thing. Yeah, I got stuck in the same numbers for like seven weeks, I couldn't even break the plateau, like, we just stuck there. But that's what I'm saying, when you came in, your intention, your intention was to look good. Your intention wasn't to grow yeah. numbers, right? So you came in with the mindset of, I'm just trying to hit the numbers that are laid out in front of me. You're not really going to, I mean, he says he's trying to increase his numbers, but when you go in with the mindset, this is all I'm gonna hit, who knows? Week one, he could have been prescribed uh, 385 for five, you know, whatever, for three reps, and he felt like he could have done, you know, more or something like that. Like, why didn't he do that then that day? That's not this how is why, This is why perfectly laid out plans or right ways of being or the exact prescription is the biggest fucking lie that we've been told in every realm of our life. There is no such thing as these are the steps to an exact result. It just doesn't exist. But the ego is so gratified by this idea that, oh, A plus B is gonna equal C every single time. Because look, that guy, look, testimonials. Him, 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 him. All the research says, and then you go do it, you don't get it, because nobody does. And then you wanna know what the fuck is wrong with me. It doesn't exist. It does not fucking exist. You have to trust your own experience and you've got to trust your ability to give 100% of your focus, time, and concentration to a particular thing before what anybody else says. There is, man, I'm gonna get in trouble so I'm talking a whole lot of shit, but it's like you guys wanna read holy books and shit to tell you exactly how you should live your life. Well, that's okay. That's a prescription written for a different time by a different person under a different set of circumstances. I don't care if it's training, I don't care if it's business, I don't care if it's relationships, life, or the eternal journey that we live. We experience as human beings. There is no hard and fast rule or way. There's your experience. Right. Give all you have another, to. You flip the coin and that could be great for somebody. Right. They could obtain, there's thousands of guys out there that that's like, that's what it is. That's what you need to do. And they would fit perfectly. I know some kids that I train that it's like, you just need a percent, you just need a percentage plan. You just need, I'm just gonna give you these numbers. You come in and hit this every time. There's some that are just like, you let them loose, you know what I'm saying? Don't yeah. pull back the reins, and you're gonna see gains way beyond right. what they would ever Right, the plan think. was gonna get you to why, 
to but, 20, but you, 20 pounds. Right. And now you're, you know, you're in the third week and you're already doing 40 pounds more. Right, exactly. So it's like, what, I mean, what are you go. really training for? I'm trying to get you better at you. I'm trying to get you better at you, not you proving my plan to be right. That'd be dope. Yeah, I, I would seriously run like a truck. That's why when I was running back, I mean, I, I, I can move and I could get get out of the way and shit, but I would run people the fuck over. I remember we played, uh... You don't look like you could stop too easy. Huh? You look like you just go through people. I do. I remember one time, I was coming with a sweep, right? The ball came. I made my way up this way, and I guess the corner was coming at me. So, you know, I'm like 225 pounds. Here comes this, you know, 190 pound kid, he puts his head down because there's no way he's going to fucking tackle me because my legs are just going. So he puts his head down and his head hits my thigh, boom! He falls like completely cracks his back and falls to the ground and I keep going. He didn't get up, that was it, he was done. They had a, he got a concussion by hitting my fucking thigh, bang! I'm not going to go around you, I'll go through you motherfucker. Well, they're dangerous, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Beat me in the fucking medicine ball. I'm all, I already lost it. So Danny can say go. On your mark. It's it. Go. Uh, Damn, bro. Yeah. She on the sheet. You call that premature ejaculation? Hey. <gasps> you gotta be tender and aggressive, man. All that aggression. <laughs> you gotta breathe when you're stroking. Five seconds in, hold your breath for five seconds, five seconds out. <laughs> you gotta temper that aggression. Y'all ready? Otherwise, uh... On your mark, get set, go! So that's how I used to win lunch money. The black boys want to race me. I'll tell them, all right. 250. Yo, back then, 250 <laughs> would get you a long sandwich and a and a quarter water. One of them sweet juices. We used to walk the Wendy's dollar menu. <laughs> that get you two double bacon cheeseburgers and, and a red it has drink. Tax on it. Yo, when you when you're 14 years old, you can eat whatever the fuck you want and still get strong. That's true, man. Yeah, it is. You really, I mean, as long as you're not getting fat, and that's basically calories, you can eat whatever the fuck you want, you're gonna get jacked. I I you might have zits and bad breath because you're eating toxic food, but you'll still get jacked. 15, 16, 17, till about 20, how old are you now? 27. So you can't get away with that shit anymore. I say to about 23. I say hey. to about 23, you can do whatever the fuck you want to do and you'll still you, get jacked. I could gain weight quick. I used to not be able to gain weight quick. <laughs> Yeah. But now this combine, I went up to 250. That shit's hard as hell to peel off without shriveling up. Camera's on, hold on one sec. <laughs> We're seven of us. Let me suck it in. <laughs> Watch us lose. Oh no! <laughs> 